Tell me about this plane crash. Well, I was 35 years old at the time and I was, there were, there were three people in the plane and I was the only survivor and they were somewhat goofing off. They were flying low, which is against FAA regulations, correct? We had friends on the ground and they were buzzing friends, so to speak, down on the ground, which is illegal. That's not good, which I didn't know. And anyway, we clipped the wires, the electrical mm. wires. That's not supposed to fly low. So with that, the plane came tumbling down Holy and God. there were people watching it. And when they saw me, they said I was upside, hanging upside down with the seatbelt still around my waist and the blood was profusely coming down. You know, whenever you have head wounds, they bleed a lot. And I was choking on my blood as I was hanging upside down, but they were able to kind of save me by lifting my head up and giving me, you know, airways to breathe because I was gasping for air, so to speak. And the rescue crew, crew arrived. People asked me, well, what do you remember? Now, I don't remember the crash. They said, I went to a neuropsychologist and he said it would take, it takes seven seconds for your brain to take something in to store it in short-term memory. So I had a concussion. So I imagine that took any, he said, I'll never remember. He said that you never put it into short-term memory. That's what he told me. But my fiance died in that crash. Mm. And Afterwards, recovery, emotional recovery was brutal. The physical, not so bad because I was in pretty good shape when it happened. And the doctor told me when I came into the emergency room, he said I had sign of paralysis because there were a bunch of the, the spinal cord or the spinal bones smooshed, crushed, and the fragments shot back into the spinal fluid. Wow. So he said there were touch and go as far as um, paralysis, but he did say that he felt my muscles in my back supported my back when the bone smooshed. So I don't know if that's true, but that was his suspicion is why the spinal cord didn't snap. Wow. But another reason to stay in good shape because I was a weightlifter at that time. I still am a weightlifter, but <laughs> anyway. Do, do you have any long-term uh complications, damages from that? Actually, no, I don't. And I think one of, well... Obviously, yes, I have a little more pain in my back, maybe than the average person. I'm not sure, but I I suffered quite a few injuries, you know, broken bones, compound fractures, concussion, and so forth and so on. But the beauty of it was that they had just developed the technology where you take, you don't give them those casts and leave them on you. You give them the casts and they remove them and start you right away exercising. Right. So I had broken both my ankles. So what they did is they removed the casts and started working on them. And also I had a cast around my waist, which they were able to take that off and make me work exercises. So I started working out right away. And it was the only thing too that saved my emotional health because I was stuck in my bed for until somebody would come to put my braces back on. I couldn't get up. So anyway, it was a rough road. Of recovery and when i realized emotional is much harder to recover from than physical pain so. that's that's a really inc incredible point uh i want to point out is the fact that you were a weightlifter and the doctor believed because your muscles in your back were strong it actually prevented you from becoming paralyzed and there are there's a lot of evidence that supports that with fractures and broken bones especially as people age in their 70s and 80s and 90s that when you do resistance training and weight training, it's that pressure, it's that resistance and pressure on the bones and on the musculoskeletal system that actually determines whether you're going to die from literally just a fall, falling and breaking a hip, or you're going to live and, and be strong and recover from that is yeah. how much muscle you have and how dense your bones are. And bone density actually has a lot more to do with resistance to the musculoskeletal system, like weight training, or if somebody lives in Sardinia, Italy, in a blue zone, for example, and they walk miles and miles a day and they carry buckets of water or, you know, bags of food, for example, up and down hills, they're putting weight on their bodies, they're carrying stones for their gardens and different things. They're constantly carrying things and putting that positive stress, that hormetic stressor on the body, these people are not dying from broken hips and falling and, and breaking uh, bones and things like that. They're actually living 80, 90, 100 years plus because they do some form of resistance training consciously or unconsciously, you know, just because their life demands it or 
You're actually going to the gym and strengthening your body. So as you age, it's essential, as you know, but a lot of people don't. Uh, as you age, it's really, really essential that we do resistance training. You don't have to be lifting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds of weight in your 60s or 70s or 80s. It's not essential. What is essential is that you put that resistance load, the load-bearing weight on your musculoskeletal system, which is why squats, back squats, and front squats, this is why you know bench press and strict press, this is why anything that's using your uh, your entire structure to strengthen is so good for you, even if it's lightweight or even if it's just bands, you're just using rubber bands, but you're creating that resistance uh, is incredibly beneficial. It's shown to increase lifespan, decrease all cause mortality, uh, increase bone density, increase you know, muscle, more muscle you have on your body, the more insulin sensitive you are, which means less likely you're going to have diabetes and other chronic diseases. So it's such an important point that you were, you know, taking care of yourself at 35 and, um, and survived that plane crash, which I think is a miracle, really. Thank you for listening to this short clip from the Nathan Crane podcast. Please share this on social media. And to listen to the full podcast, visit NathanCrane.com.